It was... I'd um, like to welcome you all, gentlemen, to the uh, first director's meeting of Scrooge Limited for this year. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry that we couldn't hold the meeting last Thursday, which would have been our usual day, but as you all know, last Thursday was um, a public holiday. Mm. Anyway, uh, down to business, and um, if you'll all look at item one on your agenda... We're all familiar with the calendar. Sometimes we even take it for granted. But somebody had to invent it. Before we ask you to be a calendar maker, let's see just how our calendar came about. We use a number of fixed time periods. Some of these, the day, the month, and the year, are based on the natural movements of the sun and the earth and the moon. And these have been known for thousands of years. The earth rotates about its axis, and each rotation we call a day. At the same time, the Earth revolves around the Sun, taking 365 and a quarter days to get back to where it started. And this period we call a year. There's one other natural measure of time, and that's based on the cycle of the moon, as it passes from new moon, through full moon, and back to new moon again. This takes either 29 or 30 days, 29 and a half days on average. Some calendars, like the Arabic and Jewish ones, follow the cycle of the moon exactly. We'll see in a minute why our months are slightly longer, 30 or 31 days, except, of course, February. So, our months don't follow the cycle of the moon exactly, but they're pretty close. There are two other measures of time that we use in our calendar. The quarter which is three months, or roughly 91 days. The four quarters probably originally related to the four seasons. And the week. Now, there's no reason why the week should have seven days. But it may have originated because the ancient Babylonians thought that the number seven had mystical powers, or that it's roughly a quarter of a month. Whatever the reason, we now use it to measure time. The problem that faces the calendar maker is that none of these time periods relate to each other at all. There aren't a whole number of days or weeks in a month or in a year, nor a whole number of months in a year. You can see for yourself what happens if you try to fit an exact number of months, each with 29 and a half days, into a year with 365 and a quarter days. Our calendar works because we made it work. But it certainly has its complications. And so, gentlemen, the expected profit for the first quarter of this year for Scrooge Limited will be 22 pounds. Now, I know what you're going to say, and you, I, I agree with you, this is a disappointment, especially in view of the 63 uh, million pound profit of the fourth quarter of last year. But may I remind you, gentlemen, that was a longer quarter. Yeah, anyway, um, uh, we'll, we'll close the meeting now, uh, uh, and we'll meet again on the um, 5th of... Uh, oh, no, wait a minute, that's a Saturday. Well, um, we'd better make it the Monday, the um, 7th. Mm, yeah. 
You know, Whitman, that went away. There, uh, <laughs> golf on the first Monday of every month. Uh, what is that, the first Monday? <laughs> well, uh, wait a minute, this isn't a leap here. I, I've been using the wrong calendar. Where's my other one? With our calendar, the months and quarters are all different lengths. And we need to have a new calendar every year. It'd be nice to have one that was simpler than the one we now use. Try to invent a calendar which is simple to use and easy to remember. And here's a hint to start with. There aren't many whole numbers that divide 365 exactly. But that isn't the case with 364 or 360. So if your calendar has 364 or 360 days, with the extra days thrown in, with or without giving them a name, you may find it a little easier. And don't think that you have to have a seven-day week. Side. If we put a spring in so it doesn't collapse altogether. <laughs> Our calendar has existed roughly in its present form for nearly 2,000 years and has resisted quite a number of attempts to change it. Perhaps you've designed a calendar which could replace the one we now use. We shall look at several possibilities, but of course, these aren't the only ones. We could try a calendar which follows the cycle of the moon and ignores the sun. This lunar calendar looks at first glance like our calendar. It still has seven days in the week and 12 months in the year. The big difference is that there are alternately 29 and 30 days in the month. The first day of every month is a new moon, and the full moon is always the 15th or 16th of the month. Fine if you're a werewolf, but look what happens at the end of the year. Twelve lunar cycles take only 354 days, but the Earth still has another 11 days before it completes its once a year tour around the sun. No problem this year or next but it doesn't take long for us to notice that the seasons are shifting. You could work out how long it would be before New Year's Day arrived in the middle of summer. Certainly a lunar calendar is no simpler than ours. Here's a calendar which is similar to the one we use, but quite a lot simpler. Each quarter is the same length, two months of 30 days and one month of 31, making a total of 91 days. Because each of the quarters is identical and a whole number of weeks long, 13 to be precise, we only need a calendar like this. It's the same for any quarter in any year. This is the same for February, May, August and November. But wait a minute.
4 times 91 is only 364. That's one day too short. In order to make up the extra day and still keep the simple pattern, we add an extra day to make the year up to 365. Maybe you came up with a calendar which is even simpler. If you decided to have 13 months to the year, you'd have got a calendar that looks like this. Not much to it. 28 days in each month, the first day of each month being a Monday. Because there are a whole number of weeks in the month, each month is the same as every other month in every year. 13 times 28 is 364, so again, we have to add an extra day to each year. As there are between 12 and 13 lunar cycles in a year, 13 months is no sillier than 12. It's just that we've got used to 12 months. Remember that you don't need to have a seven day week. Perhaps you came up with a calendar which has a different number of days in the week. Here's one such example. If you had a six day week and five such weeks in the month, you again get a calendar where every month is the same as every other month in any year. In this calendar, you only get 360 days, so again you have to add five extra days to make up a year. If you had a calendar like this, what would be your weekend? Two days a week would mean less working time in a year, and one day would mean more. That's something which applies to any calendar which doesn't have seven day weeks. In an age of decimalization, you may have decided on a 10 day week, three such weeks to the month. Or you may have come up with something completely different. Whatever your solution to the problem, you might like to consider whether the chaos caused by changing to a new system would be worth the advantages of a simpler calendar.